My name is Augusto Gonçalves, I'm an API evangelist at Autodesk, and this video is about this sample that is available on GitHub, Data Management C Sharp Desktop Sample. The sample is basically a desktop application that will connect to Autodesk uh, through Forge and get the user data including the projects and files and show that file on the uh, browser. Uh, this sample is composed by two modules, the desktop module and the cloud module. The cloud module will actually host and make all the calls to Forge and just send uh, the information back to the, to the desktop module. Uh, the desk mod desktop module don't contain any sensitive information like IDs or secrets. To show the web pages, I'm using the Ceph Sharp uh, library, which is based on Chromium and available as a .NET uh, control. So let's see the sample running. So here I have Visual Studio. If I go to the properties of this project, I will see that I'm launching the two projects inside the solution at the same time. So cloud and desktop. So let's run it. So it's going to start. As this is the first time that it is starting, it's going to ask me for my credentials. So desktop, going to open the browser. Type my password. And on the left, it's going to show me my uh, projects and hubs. And I can navigate navigate through my hubs, to my projects, get a folder, get a file. In this case, I have a version of that file, and the file will show on the right. So this uh, Chromium-based browser is very responsive. So I can, uh, for instance, maximize here, and that should uh, resize properly. So depending on the connection, in this case it's not very good, but uh, it's going to show the model, and I can navigate as, as any model available on Forge. So let me close this now, and show uh, some pieces of this code, and then run it again. So on the web config, uh, this, is, this is on the, uh, actually let's start by the desktop module. So I have the app config, uh, the only thing that the, the app uh, desktop application knows is the address of the cloud module. Uh, in this case, I'm running everything everything locally. So this is the address that I'm using, localhost uh, port, port uh, 3000, but can be uh, cloud, in, uh, of course. On the cloud module, I have a few extra information. I have the client ID, the client secret from Forge, the callback, that will be the address on my cloud module, cloud uh, application. And this is very important. This is the OAuth database because I don't want to keep that data on my application, on my, on my application. So I'm actually keeping all the data on a cloud mod, on a database. In this case, I'm using a Mongo database that is hosted on the cloud already. So when the user sign in, he, uh, the user will be attributed a random value, a GUID, in this case, this 59, etc. And this database will keep, uh, keep, keep record of the access token, refresh token, and uh, when this refresh token will expire. This is the same as expires in, so, but, but it's just a date. And this local ID is a unique ID from the client, so I know that it's the same client that is calling the, the application and not a different client with the same information that is in here. So when I come back, the desktop client will have this ID and uh, I will match that with the local ID and get the respective access token to use the Autodesk Forge APIs. If needed, the refresh token will be refreshed with this and uh, this, this record will be updated. So going back to the code, let me uh, um, enable the breakpoints that I have. And let's run this again. I'm just showing some uh, interesting pieces on this sample. Okay, so let me do one thing first. So let me come back here and uh, erase this record. That way it will ask for me to log in again. I don't want to, I, I want to show all these steps. So let's uh, uh, pretend that I'm coming in for the first time again. 
So the first thing is that the cloud module in this case is, uh, contains a page and that page will be the OAuth authentication. Note that I'm, uh, I'm querying some information on the, on the OAuth and passing the local ID so that will be go back and forth. And then I will show the user that sign-in page that is on Autodesk, not on the cloud module, but on Autodesk authentication. When it calls back, this again is still on the cloud module. So this is the API endpoint on the cloud module that will receive the callback from Autodesk. It will match if the ID is still valid and uh, just translate the expired zine into expired specific expired date instead because it's in seconds so I, I know when the token will expire so I get this session ID from the database in this case and uh, I, at this point I'm going to encrypt that information I don't want to send un unencrypted information to the client and that will send that back to the client uh, like this uh, well, in this case the, uh, the session ID will be sent to the client as the page and the client will uh, just parse the page and get the ID and we'll keep that on the local database on the desktop. So the only thing that, that, that the desktop knows is the session ID protected and of course the, the, the local ID which is something that the client already knows but uh, it's re just receiving the session ID encrypted. Uh, so this is just the uh, browser on the desktop understanding that it is uh, reloading and now it knows that the session ID was passed as part of the page and at this place here the, the desktop client is going to recognize that uh, this page is called back and going to re uh, just clean up and get the session ID which is an encrypted value. Now uh, the desktop client knows that it's signed in and it's going to ask the cloud module for the username. So that's the first thing that is requesting the username. And if I run here to the next step, it will, uh, that's the cloud module being activated to get the, uh, the, sorry, this is the desktop client calling the cloud module for the username. Uh, so here's the cloud module receiving the request for the username and uh, going to the database to get the session and the local ID, uh, getting the database uh, for that information. With the access token, it's going to call the Forge API here. So now it knows the session ID from the database and it's going to call Forge APIs to get the, to get the profile. So here we get the prof profile and we return that to the, to the client. Now the client is also calling the uh, cloud module for the hubs. So this is the endpoint on the cloud module that is being uh, called from the desktop client uh, to get the, the hubs. The desktop, the cloud module will again get the session ID and then we will use the Forge APIs to get the hubs. And at the end, it's going to filter that list and only return to the desktop client the uh, ID of the hub the name and the hub type. Uh, it can be any of those. Note that I'm not sending the information straight to the, to the desktop, but yet the cloud module is treating that information before sending it. Now the desktop module can see the, the hubs and the projects and the same way we keep navigating through those. Uh, and the last piece uh, is when the desktop needs to show the module. Again, it's not going to get the model directly from Autodesk but yet passing all that information through a page. So this is a page that is uh, the viewer page on the cloud module that is going to show the model. Note that the cloud uh, module it's making all the requests pass through this proxy. So it's going to show the model but passing everything through a proxy. So it's starting to show the model here but everything is passed through a, a, the proxy. So just the last piece, the proxy is right here. So all the calls to, uh, uh, to the Forge viewer are passing through this proxy and then calling the desktop uh, the Forge API for viewer. And that way, uh, the, the only thing that the desktop uh, module knows is the, that random uh, session ID that is just a number that I'm passing, like an identification for him like a token and uh, it's not really accessing Autodesk information directly. 
So that way uh, the cloud module can, uh, can make sure that only the information that the cloud module wants it's sent to the desktop client. So that's how it's treating all that, all that information. And then I can navigate to the model, it will work as usual. So if, if I go back to the database and double check, I can see that all the information is here on the database. So if I stop this uh, sample and run again, as the desktop application knows the session ID, it will call the cloud module the cloud module will authorize that session ID that is stored on the desktop and should run and should not ask for the authentication again. So it's just recognizing and say, okay, I know you. It's going to show the name and show the models because it's already signed in. If I sign out, it, when I click on sign out, this is basically just erasing the information it has on the uh, on the desktop, so it doesn't know anymore who uh, don't don't have the session ID stored. So this session ID information is just something that was made up for this sample. It's just a, a in a token that the cloud module sends to the desktop module, and that's it. So you can find all the sample and description here, and uh, the information I was talking about this the uh, variables and uh, how to deploy. And uh, there are some tips and tricks as well. So everything is in here.